So the whole point of this video is to help you kill Dive 50 Evolve 1. Stably. Let's go. The general mechanics of the fight works like this. In the fight, Evolve 1 will consistently have a miniature overflow who will lead the charge, two woodpeckers and three arachnids sitting behind the boss. These are all threats you want to keep away from your team, however the biggest one of them all is the boss itself. Other than the fact that everything Evolve 1 does hits hard like a truck, here's a brief rundown of what she actually does. Evolve 1's basic attack hits the forwardmost enemy with her guns. After every 8 in-game seconds or so, she will then use an enhanced attack in the form of a volley of missiles, hitting the back lines of your team should they stay too close to Evolve 1. This enhanced attack is not affected by the direction the boss is actually facing. It will always target the back line closest to your ship. Evolve 1's special skill fires her alternate gun and cancels all buffs on the unit it hits. This is very important due to the strategy that we will be applying. The ultimate skill allows Evolve 1 to mark and fire a tactical nuke at the target closest to it when it triggers, blowing up almost everything in that direction. Nothing survives. At the time this video was released for the C servers, there is only one stable strategy that we can use to clear this floor. And this strategy is proposed by Bullet from the Korean server. So do go check him out and credits to him for even coming up with such an idea. There's also a moderately high requirement regarding your DPS gears. Well, it, it is Dive 50, the deepest level to date. So don't beat yourself up if you can't beat it just yet. For this strategy to work, you'll need only 4 units in the team that you will be engaging the boss with and a very specific lineup of support leads from the other ship you bring into the dive. For the ship that will engage the boss, you want to use New Ohio for its passive and active skill to buy you time. The team lineup will be, very specifically, Veronica, Karen Wong, Ludmilla, and Ingrid. It is possible to do it without Ludmilla, however, this is the most stable team lineup that I have discovered so far. It is also important to set the following units as the leader of those ships and have the ships be arranged in this specific sequence. You want Xiaolin as the first ship's leader, Awaken Hilde as the second, Awaken Soyun as the third, and the fourth is a bit more flexible so pick a long range DPS just in case you need a final boost of damage. It could be Maria Antonov or it could also be the SSR Soyun. The reason we need to do this is because the support units that can be deployed in the fight is arranged in the same way you sequence your dive ships. Let's carry on. I've broken down the fight into several parts for easier reference. In part 1, you want to drop Veronica at the furthest leftmost of the field and let her run towards the enemy as soon as the fight begins. Then deploy Karin and Ludmilla thereafter. Until the boss's ultimate is ready to fire off, what you'll be doing is to redeploy Veronica when her immortality passive is about to expire. Based on my personal experience, the latest you should redeploy Veronica should be around 25% left on the buff icon right here. If your Veronica was killed by Evolve 1's special skill, which cancels her immortality buff early, you'll be faced with a 1 second global cooldown which does not allow you to redeploy her again instantly. Should this happen, deploy Ingrid in front of Evolve 1 as an emergency measure. During this process, when your first long range DPS supporter is ready, drop it instantly at the furthest back closest to your ship. When the boss is about to use its ultimate skill is when part 2 begins. You want to get your Ingrid ready and drop it right behind Evolve 1 to misdirect it from your team or ship. The timing that worked for me was when Evolve 1 actually starts the animation and then you drop Ingrid. Due to its long activation, there's a high chance your Ingrid will not survive until the red reticule is placed toward Ingrid should you drop it a bit too early. Once Ingrid successfully distracts the ultimate and dies, your second lead supporter should be ready for deployment. Use that instead of Veronica to save some deployment resources. The more you can save up, the safer your run will be. If you follow my recommendations at the beginning of this video, the lead supporter right now should be either Awaken Hilde or Nayubin, or in whatever tank you decide to use. Once the tank is about to die, continue deploying Veronica to hold them all at bay and the fight continues. Moving on to part 3, the most threatening part of the entire fight has already passed and in the final run to the end, this is what we're going to do. You want to repeat what you did in part 1 but now you can actually drop Veronica further at the back and make Evolve 1 face the other way much easier. 
As long as your sniper team is healthy, you should be killing the boss no problem from here on out. A few other things that some people have tried and I have tried myself is that in this particular phase, you want to drop Awaken Soyun to boost your DPS or any other long range DPS to give you the final push you need to kill the boss at the final phase. That's it for this guide video and hope it could be of help to you. There is a weird way to actually save a lot of info, keep your artifacts and save some time should you wish to redo the fight. If you'd like to know more about it, you can drop me a message on Discord. I will leave a link in the description below. Until the next video, good luck, you'll need it.